Today I'm going to talk about the role of endometriosis in infertility and more specifically in IVF. The modern approach to fertility today is pretty much a shake of hands and IVF. Since IVF has become such a, an efficacious treatment, very little attention is now placed on the actual causes inf of infertility because the, th the thinking is that no matter what the cause of fertility or infertility is, the treatment is going to be the same. So why would we put any energy into, the, into figuring out what the why is when everybody gets the same treatment? This has led to a pattern where uh, patients have, are either overtreated or undertreated. Why is the concept of not performing an accurate diagnosis of infertility so important today? It's important because we have sort of limited now, we have restricted the main causes of infertility into those broad groups that exclude others. So you have your low sperm count group, the male factor group, you have your diminished ovarian reserve group, and then you have your obviously tubal blockage, adhesion type of group, and uterine factor group. And then you have the other group, the unexplained infertility group. And the reality of this scenario and, and this division is that it probably ex excludes some major causes of fertility, of infertility, uh, such as endometriosis and immunological. And uh, so I think we need to consider taking a step back or at a minimum, take a, a deep look into what the actual uh, patterns are in these groups of patients, some of which end up being channeled into uh, one group, for example, diminished ovarian reserve, when instead the diminished ovarian reserve may be caused, for example, by endometriosis. I think one of the reasons why endometriosis has been sort of ignored from the perspective of uh, uh, diagnosis and treatment of infertility, with the exception of the obvious cases in which you have very large endometriomas and stage four disease, is the lack of data. And the reason why we lack data, I think surgeons, sh we should take responsibility for that because uh, there's a tendency from the perspective of, from the part of surgeons to just be very busy and do a lot of surgeries and not really occupy yourself with doing academic work and publishing papers, and certainly it's very hard to do large seers individually, and so the collaborative aspect has really not been out there. I just do not believe there is such thing as unexplained infertility. Uh, unexplained infertility is simply a statement that states that the doctor has not been able to figure out a reason why the patient is not getting pregnant or why IVF is not working. Most of the focus of IVF has been on the egg and most of the work has been in the lab to improve egg quality and with the hope that implantation rates would greatly increase with improving embryo quality and also with selecting uh, genetically normal embryos. The reality is that by, although by doing that we have improved implantation rates of in, at, during individual embryo transfers, we have not eliminated the problem of immunological infertility and also immunological infertility related to endometriosis. Especially in circumstances wh which I see very frequently of patients who fail multiple embryo transfers with uh, PGS tested normal embryos or have pregnancy losses with PGS to, uh, tested nor and normal embryos, these cases should not be uh, left alone and uh, pushed forward to a new IVF cycles. These are the patients who should be fully evaluated from an immunological standpoint. And uh, when we have looked at these patients from an immunological standpoint, we have discovered that uh, both genetically and from an inflammatory perspective uh, with elevation of, of both intracellular and, ser and, and, uh, and serum mediators of inflammation, uh, these are correlated to the presence of endometriosis. What is interesting is that 
although some of these patients were symptomatic, some, some patients were not symptomatic or certainly did not report the symptoms and uh, they had endometriosis. In our series of patients with uh, repeated failed IVF transfers or repeated pregnancy losses, the incidence of endometriosis at laparoscopy was 80%. One of the concerns from the perspective of the reproductive endocrinology community has been that aggressive management of endometriosis, especially aggressive removal of ovarian endometriomas, uh, can result in uh, ovarian damage and uh, uh, a lowering of the AMH. But we need to observe two important points. The first one is that the uh, drop in the AMH has been proven to be transient with a recovery period, which is actually months, but there is a recovery period. And the second concern is that of postoperative adhesions. Both of these issues can be addressed with proper surgical technique and an abatement of the risk of complication. But one aspect that is not considered in this perspective is that leaving the endometriomas in place induces more ovarian destruction and, and therefore increase damage to the ovary anyway if one does not address the problem. Furthermore, I have certainly in my practice, but it's being described over and over again, the risk of abscesses at retrieval in patients with endometriosis, as well as a severe pain flare-ups after IVF stimulation in patients with endometriosis. So one of the points that we definitely need to address is that what are the pro proper protocols of stimulation for IVF in patients with endometriosis? And uh, my recommendation is that we should use protocols that we already have in place for patients who are doing ovarian preservation for breast cancer. We already have protocols with estrogen level abatements that we're using in our patients who are doing fertility preservation for breast cancer, we should use those protocols in patients with endometriosis. And this is something that currently is not done. I believe that we need to come together as specialists in both endometriosis and fertility with a consensus on the appropriate diagnosis of endometriosis in fertility patients, the appropriate treatment of endometriosis, and most importantly, the appropriate protocols for endometriosis patients when IVF is performed.